how will you manage this case i will first investigate her blood for hemoglobin blood group rh and vdrl urine for albumin and sugar i would like to do ultrasound examination for fetal maturity localization of placenta and mal presentation and to assess the thickness of the scar at 38 weeks i would like to do clinical pelvimetry how will you do clinical pelvimetry by pervaginal examination first i will measure the diagonal conjugate what is diagonal conjugate it is the distance between the inferior border of symphysis pubis and sacral promontory how will you measure it i will strain the two fingers in the vagina with index finger touching the inferior border of symphysis pubis and the tip of the middle finger make to touch the sacral promontory now i will measure the distance between the two points against a perpendicular scale attached to the wall what is its significance diagonal conjugate minus 1.5 cm gives the true conjugate of the pelvis for example if diagonal conjugate is 12.5 cm then the true conjugate is 11 cm which is sufficient for the bivariate diameter to pass through what else will you test During the pervaginal examination I will palpate the sacral curvature, lateral pelvic walls, sacrocytic notches and ischial spine for their undue prominence. Then I will judge the transverse diameter of outlet by inserting the knuckles of the fist between the two ischial tuberosities. If it does not admit four knuckles then the outlet is considered contracted. What is Muller curve head fitting test? The patient is given exaggerated lithotomy position. The examiner's left hand pushes the head into pelvic cavity with the index and middle fingers of right hand in the vagina and thumb placed flat over symphysis pubis palpate for the station of head in vagina and push the head till it is at the level of ischial spines. Now, if the head overrides symphysis pubis there is major degree of disproportion if the head is at the level of symphysis pubis then there is moderate degree of disproportion and if the head is below the level of symphysis pubis then there is no disproportion and the inlet considering that this patient has cephalopelvic disproportion how will you manage her i will admit the patient 15 days prior to the expected date of delivery with a plan to do elective cesarean section after the fetus is mature Why do you want to admit her so early? Because about 20% of multigravity deliver within 15 days prior to the expected date of delivery and it is imperative that the patient is in hospital at the onset of labor. What are the disadvantages of elective cesarean section? The maturity of the baby may not be achieved and lower segment may not be well formed. So one may wait for the onset of labor pains. How will you confirm that the baby is mature from the history of the date of last menstrual period and from the test for fetal maturity what tests will you do first plain x-ray of the abdomen in which appearance of center of ossification of lower femoral epiphysis indicates maturity of 36 weeks upper end of tibia at 38 weeks and cuboid at 40 weeks secondly on ultrasonography by measuring the bioparietal diameter and femur length and lastly by biochemical test on amniotic fluid obtained by amniocentesis the amniotic fluid is examined for urea and creatinine levels which increases with maturity of fetal kidney amniotic fluid osmolality which decreases near term and nile blue sulfate test which stains the fat laden fetal squamous cells orange the percentage of these cells in the fluid is counted they are 10% or more at 36 weeks 50% at 40 weeks and more than 50% in case of post maturity what are the advantages of an elective cesarean section the patient is well prepared and on empty stomach and the best team of surgeon anesthetist and pediatrician is available what anesthesia will you prefer for this case spinal anesthesia because it gives excellent relaxation of abdomen for the operation and the baby has no respiratory depression of course the operation can be performed under any anesthesia local spinal or general but each has its own advantages and disadvantages which is the best 
Local anesthesia is the safest to the baby as well as to the patient, but it requires cooperation of the patient. It is generally reserved for cases where both general and spinal anesthesia are contraindicated. For example, in respiratory diseases or hypertension. What are the complications of general anesthesia? First, the pre-medications and anesthetic gases can cross the placental barrier and depress the fetal respiration. Secondly, if the patient is not well prepared, vomiting and aspiration of gastric contents may occur, leading to Mendelssohn syndrome, that is severe bronchospasm, cyanosis, respiratory infection. And what about spinal anesthesia? It can cause sudden and severe hypotension due to sympathetic block and supine hypotension syndrome. And in the post-operative period, hypotension and post-spinal headache can be troublesome. Can you tell in short the procedure of lower segment cesarean section? Patient is first catheterized to keep the bladder empty throughout the operation. After administering anesthesia, skin is painted with iodine, draped and an infraumbilical midline vertical incision is taken. After opening the peritoneum, the lower segment of the uterus is identified by loose attachment of visceral peritoneum. The peritoneum is incised transversely and pushed down along with the bladder. Now, a small transverse incision is taken over the lower segment and stay sutures are taken on its edges. The incision is then extended by pulling two fingers across it, separating the muscle fibers. Now, the baby is extracted, intravenous ergometrine is given, placenta is delivered and the uterus is sutured in three layers of comic gut. First layer of continuous stitches, second layer of inverting lumbar stitches and third layer to suture the visceral peritoneum. Then the abdominal wall is sutured in layers. What are the indications for caesarean section? The absolute indications are major degree of contracted pelvis, major degree of placenta previa, previous repair of vesicovaginal fistula and carcinoma of cervix. The other indications are abnormal lie, for example transverse lie, abnormal presentation, for example bro or face presentation, placenta previa grade 2 posterior, previous two caesarean sections, or threatened rupture of previous uterine scar, prolonged labor and fetal distress. How does the name caesarean section originate? The name originates from a law during rule of Julius Caesar known as Lex Caesarea that after the death of pregnant woman she should be buried after removing the baby from her womb by cutting open the abdomen. If you want to give a trial for vaginal delivery in such a patient who has had a caesarean in the past, what are the precautions that you would take? The patient should be hospitalized, clinical and x-ray pelometry should be done first to ensure that there is no cephalopelvic disproportion because there is no role for trial labor in previous caesarean patient if there is even suspicion of cephalopelvic disproportion. In the first stage, the patient is given only liquids orally, she can be ambulatory, a careful watch is kept on the progress of labor, signs of maternal distress such as rising pulse rate, signs of fetal distress and signs of scar dehiscence such as scar tenderness. The second stage is aided by application of prophylactic forceps or venture suction after full dilatation of cervix to avoid excess strain. After completion of third stage, the scar is explored digitally for integrity. Any complications such as fetal distress, maternal distress, premature rupture of membranes or impending scar rupture is treated by immediate caesarean section. That is enough. Thank you sir. This is the end of the fifth clinic in obstetrics on pregnancy with previous caesarean section.